spend time, tales of ghastly spirits and ghouls, worlds with most mind-blowing things can be witnessed. I often joke, it won't be long before we get a lobster that can do taxis, or a demon made of whisks, or, a, or an electric grandmother or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming up tonight we have Ray Bradbury with another of his Tales of the Bazaar, where he'll be bringing us the story of, oh, an electric grandmother. See, told you. And after that, we'll once again be off to Earthsea for another episode in Ursula Le Guin's Fantasy Saga, where hopefully there won't be a whisk or a lobster in sight. One way to find out, let's head in. Well, I've heard of robot vacuum cleaners, robot dogs, and, of course, Robocop. But Robogran? Tell you what, I'll let Ray Bradbury explain himself. Ray, I'll throw this one to you. Our next drama is I Sing the Body Electric. This has a, I think, a, a fascinating a genesis. I read a book on raising children. Now, there's thousands of them been written in the last 30, 40 years. And in this one special book, I read a comment by the author saying, whatever you do as a father or mother, whatever you do, don't die. Your children will never forgive you. Huh? The, the, the mystery of going away suddenly without permission. Uh, that struck me, and combined with another idea I had at the time, I was tired of people saying, aren't you afraid of technology? Aren't you afraid of computers? Uh, I was never that afraid. I've always been afraid of the automobile because it destroys one heck of a lot of people. But I put the two ideas together. I wanted to explain to people just how humane certain inventions are. The motion picture device is a humane device for repeating truths over and over and over again. The great films teach us and teach us and teach us. Tape recorders do the same. Good radio broadcasts do the same. They can be repeated and repeated. So these technologies which seem cold and remote are not because they embody the truths that we want to keep from one generation to another. That being true, I wanted to create a robot that was more than a robot, the electric grandmother, so I could prove to people that machines are not always just machines. They're reproducers of basic truths that we have to carry with us from day to day. So a combination of what I read in that book on child psychology, whatever you do, don't die, your children will never forgive you, and my desire to create a robot that was humane made for this story. And here it is. I sing the body electric. Our mother was dead. One late afternoon, a black car left father and the three of us, myself the eldest, my brother Timothy, and my little sister Agatha, stranded on our own front drive, staring at the home that would never be the same for us again. Well, Tom? Well, what happens now? There's always Aunt Clara. Yuck! You know she wants you to go and live with her. I'd rather die. I'd rather kill myself. Yes, well, that's what I told her, sort of. But what do we do? We'll manage. Will we? Sure we will. I have to work if we're going to eat. And you need someone. Mother's gone. We don't need anyone. I'll tell you what we need. What we need is a grandmother. But all our grandmothers are dead, too. Yes. So? I don't know. It's a crazy idea. Well, your Aunt Clara thinks it's a crazy idea. She told me so in no uncertain terms. Then let's hear it. If she doesn't approve, there must be something good about it. Here. Tom, you read this out. What is it? Just read it. I sing the body electric. Isn't that a Whitman poem? Sure. Read on. Fanto... Fantocini. Fantocini Limited. We shadow forth the answer to all your most grievous problems. One model only. We have perfected the first humanoid genre, mini-circuited, <sighs> rechargeable, ACDC Mark V electrical... Grandmother? Grandmother? Yeah, let me see that. The Fantocini Electrical Grandmother is built to give the incredible precision of love to your children. She is computerized to tutor in 12 languages 
and has a complete knowledge of the religious, artistic, and socio-political histories of the world, seated in her master hive. <laughs> what is this nonsense? It's great. It makes us sound as if we were to keep educated bees. Oh, shut up! It's crazy! Here, give me it. Let me finish. This facsimile human being will listen, know, tell, react, and love your children, will transmit miracles to your needy. Our needy. We offer the nearest thing to the ideal teacher-friend-companion-blood relation. Stop! Don't go on! It's too much even for me. Why? I was just getting interested. Do they really have these things? Or is it a joke? Let's not talk about it anymore. It was a mad thought. Not so mad. I mean, heck, whatever they built couldn't be worse than Aunt Clara, huh? <laughs> <laughs> And we do need somebody, don't we? <laughs> sure we do. Agatha? Mm -hmm. What do you think? We can try. Sure. But tell me this. <laughs> when does our real mother come home to stay? <laughs> What are fantacini? It's an Italian word for shadow puppets, I think. Or dream people. There's something kind of weird about the lighting here. Have you noticed? Sure. We all look warmer and happier, even though it's freezing outside. And that music's kind of weird, too. Look! In the case, puppets. Marionettes. Well, if that's all they are, what are we doing here? You gave me one of those dumb things two years ago, Dad, and the strings were in a zillion knots by dinner time. Then we shall have to see what we can do to eliminate the strings. Guido Fantuccini at your service. Here's how we do it, Miss Agatha Simmons. What's this? A key to wind them up with. A golden key? This is the key to your very own do-it-yourself electrical grandmother. You're in charge. Hmm. Shall we go? Step onto the moving carpet, please. Isn't this fun? Like walking on water. <laughs> what is that? Listen. They are the voices of all kinds of women. We must obey them and find just the right one for you. But to do that, we must hear you speak, all of you. Once we have the voice, the rest follows naturally, as night follows day. Speak. Hi. Hi. I'm Timothy. I'm Timothy. Hello. Hello. Grandmother. Grandmother. Where are you? Where are you? We sure need you right we now. Sure you right Why now. must we speak? So that when you listen to her, you will hear something of yourselves coming back to you. That is how it works. That is how she works. I see. I see. I begin to understand now. I understand now. Or I think I do. Hi. Hi. Grandmother? Grandmother? Where are you? Where are you, are you better hurry. You we, better need hurry. You. we need Agatha? you. Agatha? No. Please, honey. Just say something. No, let go! I won't have my voice used. I won't! Excellent. <sighs> That's plenty to be going on with. And now, let's see what we can do with it all. Fantocini. 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 Puppets. Fantocini. Puppets. Marionettes. Marionettes. Puppets. Marionettes. Nefertiti. 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 It means the beautiful one is here. The beautiful one is here. Nefertiti. Oh, she's there, all right. Well, I think it's a beautiful voice. Just beautiful. And that was it, really. At least most of it. The voice was more important than all the rest. Oh, but we argued about the rest. What a time we had. She had to be just right. She shouldn't be too bony or too fat. Her hand must not be marble cold or oven hot. There was the color of her eyes. Timothy won that one. And her hair to fight over. 
And always the flowing river of green carpet ran on, bearing us with it from one magical department to another, until it deposited us all on a far shore late in the day. And after that, well, they made us wait. They made us wait for three whole months, while Agatha, who was the youngest, turned her face to the wall and saw sorrow there, and put her hand out again and again to touch it. Tom! Timothy! Agatha! I do believe she's coming! There's the helicopter! She's coming! Look, she is! Look, Tim! They're luring a box! Carefully! Carefully! There! On the lawn by the porch! I'll get a crowbar. God, I hope, oh God, what have I done? Magic! She's gonna be magic! Careful! You don't want to hurt her. But she's... What is this? It's like a mummy. Tom? It's a sarcophagus. She must be inside. Is that real gold? Oh, look at the hieroglyphs. <laughs> Just like in museums. The golden mask face of the woman looked back at us with just the merest smile. The hieroglyphs told stories. We were painted there. Agatha in sixth grade, Timothy in high school, myself in college, wearing glasses, running a little to fat. The sarcophagus spelled winters ahead, springs to squander, Autumns to spend. Let's open it. Well, let's get her out. Look, there's a bandage for each of us. <laughs> She's all wrapped up in us. She is, Tom. <laughs> she is. Quill, Quill, come on. Let's unwrap her. Come on, Agatha. Oh, all right. That's it. Well, look. She's in there somewhere. Come on, kids. Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's beautiful. But what if she's dead, too? She's not moving. Idiot. What? You've got the key, haven't you? Oh, hurry up, Agatha. Where's the key the man gave you to wind her up? It's here, round my neck. But where does it go? In her navel, stupid. Go on. Be Timothy. <sighs> Tim. Gosh. And you? I'm Tom. Oh, ah. oh that's better. Oh. But isn't there another boy? A girl. I'm a girl, and I'm not coming any nearer. Ah, yes. Alicia. Agatha! Of course. Algernon, isn't it? I said Agatha. Oh, well. Agatha, Timothy, and Thomas, let me look at you. No, let us look at you. Oh, come on, Agatha, uh, she won't bite. No, I'm staying here. I don't like her. I wish she'd go away. Well, I don't. I think she's lovely. And she was. Not too young, not too old. She had a sound that was all her own. Or at least that's how I remember her. She sounded like a warm summer hive. Bees, Timothy had said, when first we read about the Fantaccini Company, and he was right. She made a sound like a season all to herself. We were drawn to her. All except Agatha, that is, who stayed on the porch watching. Your eyes. What about them? They're the color of agates. I just love agates. They're the color I chose. And what could be better than that? And what about you, Master Tom? Me? How shall we be friends, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I think that you are a dog, mad to bark, but with toffee in his teeth. What? 
Have you ever given a dog toffee? You laugh and hate yourself and run to help and laugh again when his first new bark comes out. I can see I'll have to help you to bark a little. Is this your kite? Sure, but the string's broken and I don't have any more. Well, I do. Now, let me just get the hang of this. I've never used it before. Will you fly for me? Yes, sure you will. Wow! Oh, gee, how do you do that? It's like a web coming from your finger. But strong enough to hold a kite. It's so high! If you think that's high, watch this! Wow! Oh. I make it as I need it. Instant thread. Oh, here. I think that's enough. Wind it round your fist, Tom. It's the longest kite string in the history of the world. <laughs> And now, what about Abigail? Agatha! Oh, yes, Agatha. How shall we make do? There must be some way. We'll never be friends, never. Oh, we'll just have to see. No, we won't see. No, never! And that was only the first day. There was second day and a third. And all the days after... We were planets turning about the central light that was Grandma. And slowly, slowly, Agatha came to listen and to watch. As for Grandma, she merely listened. But there was another thing about her, something that dawned on me only gradually, maybe because I was older than the others. We found it out for sure when we took pictures of her, Timothy and I. And then I sent Agatha to photograph her, too. Look, it's just as I thought. But how does she do it? That's what I want to know. How does she do what? She's different. It depends who's looking at her. It, it shows up more in the pictures, but it happens even when we're talking to her. She changes. She doesn't. She's our grandmother. She's beautiful. Sure she is. But she transforms herself for each of us. She gives us what we most need. Only it's so subtle that you can't put your finger on it. One face for one person at a time. You watch. You'll see. And when all three of us are there, it's like a miracle. The changes are so soft and small and mysterious, you'd hardly notice them. But they're there all the same. Magic. She's just magic. Tom... Just let me finish this, Dad. No, it's okay. Don't stop. I just wondered... What's wrong with Agatha? She spends so much time in her room. I know what's wrong with her. What? She's beginning to like Grandma. That's what's the matter. You're pretty smart for your age, Tim. Smart heck. It's obvious. The more Agatha likes Grandma, the more she hates herself for liking her. The more afraid she gets of the whole mess. So what do we do? Oh, I think we leave it to Grandma. Leave what to Grandma? Homework? <laughs> Have a cookie. Oh. Mm. These are so mm. good. <laughs> Not homework. Agatha. Ah, well, she's afraid. Of you? Not of me, so much as what I might do. We must wait for her to find that her fears have no foundation. If I fail, I will send myself to the showers and rust quietly. Don't do that. <laughs> Who would bake cookies like this for us? <laughs> Tell me, how do you do it? Do what? All this. Jesus, you even cook chicken like my wife, but you bake the way I remember my mother baking, too. All that you are. What are you? I am given things which I then give to you. I am a machine. No. No, you're more than that. Of course I'm more than that. I am all the people who thought of me and planned me and built me and set me running. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, there was a huge outcry. Machines were supposed to dehumanize. Well, some do. The motor car, for instance. But it's all in the way they are built and used. I am a grandmother machine, which is to say that I am more than a machine. How can you be more than what you seem? 
No man is as big as his own idea. We're in a new age now where we can think up a big idea and run it around in a machine. But you must have been invented by someone who loved machines. Exactly. Guido Fantaccini grew up among them and hated all those lies. Lies such as, all machines are cold, thoughtless, awful. But there are some that compensate. Machines that trim your soul in silhouette like a vast pair of beautiful shears. We shadow forth. And for that, you need examples. Examples? Well, for thousands of years, you humans have needed kings, priests, philosophers, fine examples to look up to. But being human, even the finest priests and philosophers fall from grace. And you, Grandmother, why do you never make mistakes? You're perfect. You're better than anyone ever. I'm not perfect, no. But being mechanical, I cannot be greedy or jealous or mean or small. I can keep an idea clean and whole and intact. Tell me how you would like to be and then let me run ahead to explore those ways. In the darkness ahead, turn me as a lamp in all directions. I can guide your feet. And above all, I can go on giving love, even in the middle of hate. Yes, but... But what? But all this talk of love and stuff. Yes? Oh, good God, woman. You're not in there. No, but you are. You, Aunt Thomas, and Timothy, and Agatha. Huh. Everything you say and do, I'll keep and treasure. I shall be all the things a family forgets it is. What is love? Maybe love is someone giving us back to ourselves, just a trifle better than we had dared to dream. If paying attention is love, then I am love. If knowing is love, then I am love. If helping you not to fall into error is love, I am love. No one will go hungry. I will love you all, always. But I won't let you. It's lies, I tell you. You lie. No one loves me. She said she did, but she lied. Who? Mother! She said, I love you, but it was lies. And you're like her. You lie. You're lying now. And I hate her. And I hate you! Oh, Agatha! Don't touch me! I hate you! Agatha! Let me. I'll follow her. She moved swiftly, gliding down the hall, and then suddenly, easily, running out of the door and through the front garden. Agatha was poised at the curb. of me not to have seen. Grandma! Oh, how silly of me. But you're dead! The car! Hit me, yes. For a few moments, there was a severe concussion of circuitries. But then, I sat up and gave myself a shake, and a few molecules of paint jarred loose on one printed path or another, righted themselves, and here I am. But I thought you were <laughs> dead. And only natural. Oh, my dear Agatha. I see now why you were afraid and never trusted me. 
I had not as yet proved my singular ability to survive. For how can children ever understand when you just up and go away and never come back with no excuse, no apologies, no nothing? They can't. How could they? You felt as if your mother ran away to death. And after that, how could you trust anyone? So when I came, I should have known why you would not accept me. For you feared I might not stay. But now, do you see, Abigail? Agatha, oh yes, I see. Uh, I do see. Uh, I do. <laughs> and so we lived happily ever after. Or at least we lived together until it was time for all of us to go to college, one by one. And when the last of us, Agatha, was all packed, why, Grandma packed too. Grandma? What are you doing? Going off to college, just like you. Back to Guido Fantaccini's, back to my family. Aren't we your family? Of course. But now I go back to my larger family there, my sisters and aunts and cousins. And what will happen to you there? Oh, well, that all depends. Some of us linger. Others go to be drawn and quartered, you might say. Their parts distributed to other machines who have need of repair, so it matters little. Oh, they mustn't draw and quarter you. I couldn't bear that. Well, there is an alternative. For a very small fee, there is a room. A large, dim parlor, all quiet and nicely decorated, where as many as 30 or 40 of us electric women sit and talk, uh. each in her turn. Or so I'm told, because I haven't been there yet. But for a small fee, that's where I might be. And I'll talk in my turn and tell all I have learned from you. But you taught us. <laughs> no, it was learning both ways. We'll sit there, growing wiser and calmer every year, and we'll be waiting, should you ever need us for your own children, in time of illness or, or deprivation or death, waiting for a time when we may perhaps grow so worthy and so fine that, like Pinocchio in the old tale, the gift of life may be given to us. For we have our own dreams and myths, too, you know. Oh, <laughs> Grandma, you don't have to wait. You've always been alive to us. Don't go. I must. You don't need me now. But my dearest Abigail, Agamemnon, Agatha, <laughs> when you are very old and gone childish again, send for me. I'll come back when you need me. Oh, we'll never grow old. That'll never happen to us. And then we were gone, and the years are flown, and we are old. All three of us. Our children are grown and gone. Our wives and husbands are vanished. And now, by a strange coincidence, we are back here, together, in this old house of ours. But we have sent for someone else. The three of us have called for her. Grandma! Oh, Grandma! You said you'd come back when we had need of you. Well, that time has come. And like all old people, we are surprised by our great age. We are three old children who rise up crying, We loved you. We still love you. Come to us. Grandma, where are you? Do you remember everything that we left in your keeping? Is that the sound of the helicopter? And what is that on the grass by the front porch? Is it the beautiful sarcophagus again? Do we have the strength to open it? And the gold key, forever hung at Agatha's breast, warmed and waiting down all these years. Oh, Grandma, will it wind? Will it set in motion? Will it fit? Amazing things, helicopters. In that dramatization of I Sing the Body Electric, Tom was played by David Jarvis. Father was Angus McInnes. Agatha was played by Buffy Davis. 
and Timothy by Colin Scott Moncrief. Fantuccini was played by Bob Doherty, and our Mark V AC-DC electric grandmother was played by Joanna Tope. The story was dramatized by Catherine Cherkowska, and the director in Edinburgh was Hamish Wilson. I'm Ray Bradbury, and I'll be back next week to introduce the sixth and last in this series of Tales of the Bazaar. Skeleton. And yes, Ray Bradbury will indeed return at the same time next week with a tale of bones right here in the seventh dimension. This is The Seventh Dimension on BBC Radio 4 Extra. Right, now it's time for us to continue our new series of Earthsea, the enduring fantasy cycle set on a vast magical archipelago, rich with wizards and dragons. Dragons threaten the Inner Isles, killing people and burning harvests. The king has sent for help, and Tenar has arrived on the royal island of Havnor, and with her, her daughter Tahanu, who happens